I just bought the new Ping Chipper. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. If you like to golf and you are an amateur like me, and maybe you struggle a little bit on your short game, well, a chipper might be the answer for you. Now, this is a surprising club. I think a lot of people were surprised that Ping came out with a chipper. They used to have a chipper way back in the day called the Chip O. This is the Chip R, and this is a brand new club. And what's really interesting about this is that an OEM, someone who builds really high quality products, has gotten into the chipper game. For most of us that want a chipper, we've had to go to kind of some smaller brands some niche brands if you will now I want to show you this club here because I have absolutely loved gaming my chipper here and this is the Cleveland smart soul chipper and like I said I have really started to dial this bad boy in I have really started to love this I have let other people play this and I've been playing it all season with pretty good results in fact the last time I hit this I was about five feet off the green and about 60 feet away from the hole and I put this within two and a half feet and a tap in for par and this club is really what saved me now there are a number of things that i really love about this cleveland smart soul chipper that is different than this ping chipper here but one of the big differences here is what sold me on buying this and trying it out now first of all what i really love about this smart soul chipper is how wide this flange is you can kind of see it at a dress it might just peek out the back there but it's so wide here on the sole that it really cuts through deep rough now now, I want to show you the chipper here is much more iron like it doesn't have as wide of a sole it's still pretty wide here it does advertise that it has eight degrees of bounce so that's kind of nice but it's not as wide there I don't know that it'll be as forgiving when you're kind of sweeping across the turf or across the rough but overall size it's pretty similar one of the things that I will say is that they have done a really nice job here of making it look like any other club it doesn't really look like an iron but it actually has some features here that make it look more iron like than a lot of other chippers some are really wide they look like a mallet head putter but this one is obviously pretty thin it's actually got the hole right here with the cap or weight like some of the other ping irons reminds me of the rad speed and the ltd x irons there and what they have done here is actually put on a lot of material so this middle part is milled out it even has a little bit of a carbon fiber decal or something right there and the reason I like that is because there's a lot of weight in the hosel right here and a lot of these chippers tend to be hosel heavy or heel heavy and there isn't a lot of toe weight here and that's not necessarily super forgiving so to have weight flanking the impact area of the ball means that even if you're off a little bit off a of center you still have equal amounts of weight on the left and right side of the ball so the club head doesn't twist now what I've also found interesting, and this is on some of the other ping irons, is that they have seemed to mill out some of the material right there. So I think that lightens up the hosel, kind of makes it a little bit more balanced here. Now, I wouldn't have minded if they had filled this with material as well, some heavy metal, because one of the things that I don't like about this is that you can't add weight. Now, you can do that with lead tape or something like that, but I really hate kind of manipulating golf clubs with things that are ugly. This club here is actually pretty heavy the head weight on this head here is 314 grams i think so it's pretty heavy but this one is 331 grams so that is really the big reason that i have switched to this because it is heavier and i like that heavy weight especially when i'm trying to cut through heavy rough the heavier weight here allows me to have a little bit of a smoother stroke as well as i love the feel of it like it is going to kind of cut through the rough even if i don't have all of that wrist strength or hand strength behind the shot so i really really love that now the other thing that this chipper does is it comes on a graphite or steel shaft here now, like i said i just love more weight there and so i have gone ahead and put in the Peterson connect tuned red shaft here into the ping one so i have two identical clubs for the most part but this one has 17 grams more weight in the head which i think i'm gonna like now the other difference here is that this club has more loft than this club i think this is 37 degrees and i think this is something like 42 degrees so there is five degrees of difference i don't know that that'll make a big difference but i'm kind of dialed in with this one so i'm a little concerned that this one might punch a little bit more and roll a little bit farther and so i might have to relearn kind of my technique with this chipper so now that all of that has been said we need to go out on the golf course and try it out
So this is a video of me hitting the chipper for the very first time, never putting this chipper to a ball until this moment. Now, this is a fairly typical situation where you're just off the green, a few feet of rough, and you have to chip it because you can't put it through the rough. And one of the things that I noticed here is that it's just kind of stupid how easy this thing works. Even though I didn't have the feel dialed in because the loft is five degrees different than my old chipper, I just went ahead and played it like I would normally do and it seems to perform very similarly. In fact, the amount of flight versus my take back and the roll seem to be spot on with my Cleveland chipper. I will say the thing that I really love about this is it doesn't necessarily feel a lot heavier, but I think that extra weight is producing a, a little bit of extra momentum behind that ball and giving me just a little bit more confidence that I'm going to cut through the very, very heavy, thick, wet, rough right here. And so I was finding that the ball was popping out even in less than ideal lies here. So I really loved it because every one of these shots, again, some of them would be a hard putt, but they were all playable shots. And in many cases, I'd pull out a 60 degree wedge here and try to flop it on. And after hitting incredible chips with this right out of the gate, I don't know why I play a wedge at all. All right, those were my very first hits with the chipper here. And I wanna show you, never have hitting this before, where these balls are. So, all right, this is the worst one, and that is about eight feet away. These two right here are about four and five feet, respectively. This one is two feet. That one is only about seven inches, and that one's about two feet. So any one of these chips from that rough, I would happily take. And that is my first hits with the chipper. All right, now I wanted to set the balls up just off of the green, again, in the rough where you have to chip it. The pin that I'm going at is actually pretty close here. So what I wanted to see is if I could get the ball to stop in a relatively short amount of green. So I think a lot of times we're just off the green. We don't have a ton of green to work with and you instantly think you have to flop it and a lot of people don't have a flop shot in their bag. Now, one thing I will say is my camera crew here was pretty lazy and obviously the camera got knocked over, but I reprimanded them and got it set back up. Again, I was going for chips that were maybe the shortest chips that I could make here because I didn't want the ball to run way past the green. I knew I wasn't going to impart a lot of backspin. I noticed that these balls were flying about 10 feet and then having maybe 11 or 12 feet of roll beyond them. In many cases, I think a lot of people use a rule of about one third or 25%. But I really felt that it would roll about 150% of whatever it flew. Now, this last shot, I dumped a little bit here, got caught up in the grass. Right. Again, this was kind of a tough one because they were different lies. Some of these were really buried. This one was by far the worst. That is leaving me something like 10 feet. But the rest of these, even though this one is the second worst here, right, seven feet. That one is only about three feet about a foot and then we've got about a five footer coming back here so uh, those are all pretty good I definitely would say that you kind of need to dial it in depending on how buried in the rough it is now this last one I wanted to make as unforgiving as possible. This is one where I would worry about duffing it and leaving it in the rough on the next shot. I put myself about 15 feet away from the green so I have about 15 feet of rough that I need to carry and then again only maybe 18, 19 feet of green to work with. So you do have to make sure that you fly this, you know, 20 feet and I wanted to see if I could stop it and get it close to the pin. Now again, the camera crew here let me down. You can't see the pin that I'm aiming at in this shot here but I want to show you here that you can fly this thing just carry that rough and it actually sits pretty good and in this case I would say that the rollout is maybe closer to 100% of what the flight is so I was kind of flying this maybe 20 feet and then the rollout was also maybe about 20 feet maybe even a little bit less now everyone's chipping style is a little bit different but i will tell you that i draw back the club about an inch for every foot that i want the ball to fly so in this case i wanted it to fly about 20 feet so i was pulling the club back in the backswing about 20 inches that's just generally a rule of thumb that i use because i accelerate pretty hard through the ball depending on what your pace of the swing is you may find it to be a little different you can see how i kind of punch that club through the ball and so that just makes sure that i'm accelerating through the shot that i'm not letting the grass and the turf uh, dictate the speed of my club head as I'm chipping. All right. 
despite the camera falling over there, you can't really see where they were. Basically, I was trying to get through 15 feet of rough and then only having maybe 20 or 22 feet to the pin. So a lot of rough, not a lot of green. And I wanna show you what we did here. This one was the worst. That is about a three foot putt. The rest of these are basically within two feet. And that guy just refused to get in there. So I will tell you what, in very lush conditions, man, that is pretty amazing. I am a big fan of this bad boy. Now, I did have a chance to game this a couple times since I filmed this video, and in fact, one of my friends was absolutely sold on this. Uh, had about a 60-foot chip that ended up about 18 inches from the hole, and so he became a believer because you just kind of plop it right online. It stays square. I love the extra weight, the extra 16, 17 grams over the Cleveland. It just makes the head feel like it is cutting through the turf. It is cutting through the ball. I think the weighting of the head seems to be very forgiving. I love the fact that it looks like a normal club. So if you haven't put a chipper in the bag because of the optics, this is definitely a great way to put one in that looks like every other club that performs incredibly. And I hope that it's the beginning of OEMs getting more into the chipper game because I think a lot of people, if they try it, are going to find that they are dropping strokes off their game. So if you want to pick up the chipper from Ping, it is the best chipper that I've ever used and it is going in my bag. I will put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper.